Hello from Cheltenham Racecourse. We've reached the end of the third day of the Cheltenham Festival 2020. And once again, I am joined by reigning champion jockey Richard Johnson and Racing Post editor Tom Kerr to talk about the day's events. Dickie, we'll start with the Stairs Hurdle, a race in which you set quite a fierce gallop on Apple's Jade. Alas, she didn't quite get home. Do you think that fierce pace contributed to Paisley Park's disappointment somewhat? Um, maybe. Um, like I say, I've gone a good even gallop all the way. I actually thought it would have suited Paisley Park. I thought, you know, he's a horse that, you know, comes off a strong run, run race usually, and, and I thought it would have suited him. But, you know, I, I can't think that, that that was his major contributor to him getting beat. I, I, I think maybe he just ran or he underperformed. I, I just yeah, I can't imagine that's the form he shows over the last 18 months. So I think it's frustrating for everybody who obviously who backed him and who followed him. But I just think, yeah, today you haven't seen the, seen the, you know, the true Paisley Park. As we saw with Deffy de Saw yesterday, they're just not machines, are they? No, that's the thing, and, and yeah, it's frustrating for you know obviously the the, the Lavelle team and the, their owners. We, again, same that they'll be absolutely you know devastated tonight because you know it all seemed to be you know going so smoothly up until today. So um, it's, it's disappointing, but I'm sure he'll be back again. And um, yeah, the main thing is he, he you know he seemed fine, and um, I'm sure he'll put it right another day. And Apple's Jade, have we seen the last of her, or would connections not really say? Yeah, no, they, I think they I think she's going to retire to stud now. Um, I think she came here. They put the blinks on. They said, look, you know, pop her out. That's the way she likes to be ridden. Um, you know, set a, set a you know a decent you know honest gallop all the way, and she, and she did. She was very enthusiastic. Um, but again, she she didn't finish her race off really. And I think they've decided that that's you know she's been a fantastic mare for them. And um, yeah, I think she'll um, be off now. And I'm sure in a few years' time we'll be seeing her offspring. Exciting stuff. Uh, Listener Gar Oscar, of course, was the horse who won the stairs, providing a fantastic winner for Adam Wedge and Rebecca Curtis, who's in a bit of a rebuilding phase in her career. Yes, she is, and she's uh, also just given birth to uh, to a baby, so a fantastic uh, little present for the for the the growing family there. Yeah, wonderful result for Rebecca. Uh, Fifty to one, Listener Gar Oscar, uh, third behind Paisley Park last time out. So, not many people. Uh, gave it a real chance today but a fantastic performance great for Adam Wedge as well first uh, festival winner for him and I thought it was lovely uh, after the race there's a great picture um, of the Aidan Coleman being one of the first to congratulate Adam you know it just goes to show that uh, you know these jockeys even in their even in their sort of darkest moment when they've been turned over in a championship race on it on an odds on favorite you know still the first one to, to say well done to their to their colleagues good sports aren't you yeah. yeah I think you know it's one of those look, obviously we're all ultra competitive before and sort of during the race but you know after the race you can't change the result then and, and again you know we you know, we're lucky enough um, obviously Aiden was you know was on the right end of it on Tuesday he won the Arkle and you know it, it's it is it swings around roundabouts but um, yeah you know so it's always nice to sort of congratulate the winner and, and like you say unfortunately it wasn't for Aiden today but I'm sure he'll have another day in the sun and of course, earlier in the day or early on the card, we saw the Ryanair, which had a thrilling finish. Simply the bets. Sorry, it wasn't simply the bets at all. Completely the wrong. Right, right colours, right connections, wrong horse. Uh, St. Calvados narrowly missed out to Min. Do you think with a clear run, St. Calvados could have done it? It would have helped. I, I couldn't say that he definitely was. Definitely would have won. Obviously, yeah. If he'd have had a clear run and jumped the last well, I think if he'd jumped the last well, he'd have had the run. It's just because he because he was awkward at the last. All of a sudden, the the, the room ran out. Um, and he, he rallied again, but I think Min actually won, you know, reasonably well. And I think Min, look, he's been a, a fantastic horse. He's won lots of great ones before, and um, but his first winner at Cheltenham, so you know, great for you know the Willie Mullins team and um, the Richies. You know, they they have lots of good smart horses, and you know, I think he deserved it today. Min, of course, a model of consistency. We couldn't say the same about Sam Crow, but he battled very hard to win today. He did. What a fantastic performance. It was such a close finish that uh, David Russell didn't think he'd won and sort of set, set off back to come in uh, and had to be told by his colleagues that he had won. And uh, it was a hell of a result and, and a fantastic one for Sam Crow, of course, who has been this sort of frustrating horse, once uh, sort of held up as a second coming and for years has been you know, one of racing's great hype horses. So fantastic to see Sam Crow uh, get his head in front by the narrowest of margins. Uh, Dickie, obviously... First, I should say, pleasing to see you up and well after your fall. You've got some good rides to look forward to tomorrow. Hopefully, Time Hill can reverse your fortunes. Yeah, no, definitely. Look, he, he's the one I've been really looking forward to all week. And, um, you know, he comes here tomorrow, hopefully, with good form in the book. Um, in great, Well, he seems in very good form at home. Um, so, hopefully, he'll, he'll run a big race. And, you know, we'd love you to think that, yeah, he, he can, he can uh, yeah, cap the week off that hasn't really quite gone to, gone to plan so far.
and you've another with an outside chance in the county hurdle for Philip Hobbs. Yeah, Oakley, look, he's a, he's a very very nice, straightforward horse. I, you know, we felt he was a horse that probably would benefit from another year of the hurdles, um, and, and we thought there was a bit more to come from him. So I think a stiff track over two miles, um, probably a you know, true run race, that should suit him. So, again, he'll have things in his favour tomorrow. It's whether, you know, hopefully he's in front of the handicap, but there could be a few others um, you know, also. It's, it's a very, very competitive race, but he, he definitely has a, you know, a, a decent chance. We'll come back today and I'll bring you back into it, Tom, so you don't feel left out. What would be your highlight from today? I guess it would have to be Sam Pro winning. It was just such a thrilling finish and it was great to see one of these horses who we at the Racing Post have been reporting on for years. It's one of these horses where we can write a story on Sam Pro every day uh, for a month and people will still tune in. There's a fascination about this horse who's, who's sort of got this frustrating record, but undoubted ability uh, so great to see Sam Crow uh, get that win well, gentlemen thank you very much for your insight we will be back tomorrow evening to dissect and review all the action from the final day of the festival tune in to the Racing Post YouTube channel to catch that after Racing Post live through the afternoon thanks for joining us